Okay, we're here with this new technology, this nanoscope or needle technology. You can see this is a very tiny needle-sized uh, scope, 1.9 millimeters in diameter. And uh, we're going to be using this today on the ankle. It can be used all around the ankle for various pathologies. We're going to be looking at today the front of the ankle to see if there's any anteromedial impingement and resect that if necessary. And we can do this, of course, in a normal operating room, but we can do it in a treatment room. And where I have been doing this, in fact, is in the office setting, where the patient is just given a small amount of local. And we have these pre-marked out portals here. These are standard arthroscopy portals. And the first thing we do is we just create a little bleb in that area, and then we advance that into the joint itself. Once we've done that, then we move on to an 11 blade, and we just create a very small nick in the skin. The advantage of the small nick is it really only has to be the diameter of the uh, scope itself. So you don't need sutures at the end. And then we just advance that into the joint. And once we go through the capsule, it's a defined uh, pop as it goes through the capsule. And then you can see how really tiny this is. Superficial perineal nerve, you can see here by the fourth toe flexion sign. We want to try and avoid that wherever possible and then we're going to put in our needle. So as you can see from the image quality here, this is actually the AITFL at the anterolateral aspect of the ankle joint. Um, this is intact or Ferkel's band here, a little bit hypertrophic. The image quality here, although the camera size is so much smaller than what we would traditionally use, uh, I think we can challenge any company to produce a better quality image than this. This is really as good as anything I can see uh, with a large scope uh, within the operating room. And now we, we advance our, this is a two millimeter scope that goes in here. So now as we advance in our two millimeter shaver, um, you can see as you would normally, we can put on a little bit of suction and it starts to shave some of that cicatrized tissue at the anterolateral aspect of the joint. As we continue to do that, you can see, again, the image quality here is second to none. You can see some uh, striations in the cartilage, but overall the cartilage in this patient is quite good. And now we're looking at the rest of the joint. We're looking at all the various points of interest. And you can see we can drive this through. Now, normally, under, uh, when you're using a larger scope, you have to have this ankle under traction. And in the course with a nanoscope, with a 1.9 millimeter diameter, you do not need any traction. The joint is opened up very nicely. Um, and you can see right at the back here, this is relatively normal cartilage. But again, look at the quality of that, that image. It's, uh, it's really, really terrific. And coming around here now onto the medial side, and we're looking at, again, a relatively normal cartilage. And you can see that there's a little bit of fluid in the way, so we can increase that uh, with our, yeah, as we increase the pressure in our pump, you can see it's pushed a little bit of that blood away. Another way that we can do this is we just clamp off uh, the pump, and we can just use a small syringe. Perfect, and then you can see that it's clearing up the image very nicely. As we articulate, there's a small little defect here, and that uh, most likely traumatic in origin from a, an ankle sprain, um, and that fibrillated cartilage, of course, over time will not regenerate. And this is an area that we can identify pathology very early on uh, with the use of a nanoscope, and that's something that we could deliver a biologic very easily to this um, in an effort to protect the underlying cartilage there. So that's on the medial side. And again, this is not something you're going to necessarily see on MRI or other conventional imaging. And this is when nano really comes into its own. So now we're looking at the midsection of the joint. Again, all relatively normal here. And we're looking now at the very front of the joint. You can see again this cicatrized uh, mass at the front here. And we're able to resect that with our uh, 2.0 resector. And again, this is just clearing so we get better visualization. But there is some anterolateral impingement over here. Uh, bony impingement that we'll be able to uh, remove. And you can see with this, um, this nanoscope, the ergonom ergonomically designed handpiece, it's so light, there is no multiple cables coming out of this. It's not difficult. You can see where the position up here to take the picture. It's very easy for me uh, to use my finger to take a picture without having to change the position of the unit itself. And overall, this is just very, very easy to use um, and certainly not fatiguing in any way. So what we've done is we've just uncovered a little bit of anterolateral impingement here. And now we're going to use a small jacketed burr. And again, all of this is done under local, and the patient is looking 
And I think that's very important for the patient to understand and to buy into what their pathology is. Um, when they see this under the scope, they understand then much better about what their pathology is and what their recovery uh, will require, rather than just looking at an abstraction, either in an MRI or an intraoperative picture that we may show them later. So we've taken enough of that scar tissue away there now. In the interest of this demonstration, we'll go in and we'll just take some of this bone away uh, to show how easy it is to do, again, uh, with nano. Again, what I do with these, typically, um, I will dorsiflex peroperatively. And of course, if the patient is in skeletal traction or if the patient is in any sort form of traction, it's very difficult to do that because uh, that it's already uh, pulled out to its maximum amount. Uh, whereas with the nano, when there's no traction, you can quite easily dorsiflex it. And you can see that there's no impingement coming off the, the neck of the talus there, which is often a pathology that's missed unless it's looked for. So again, you can see just with this burr that we can take small quantities of this bony overhang away without any damage to the underlying soft tissues. And you get, a, again, an absolutely perfect picture looking right across the joint so we can take off the just precisely the right amount of bone to prevent impingement. So in addition to the miniaturized camera here, the nano camera, we also have a portfolio of different size instruments or different uh, smaller instruments. And what we're using here for the purpose of demonstration is a two millimeter disposable single use uh, grasper. We're just going to grasp that little bit of chondral uh, scarring there. And you can see how precise this is in terms of its ability uh, to pull off even a very small piece like that and pull it out without any difficulties. We have a whole range of these, um, including two millimeter biters and scissors, as well as graspers. So you can see again on the medial side, we've just switched the portals now very easily in this. And we're just going to use again the two millimeter shaver here uh, to clear away all of this scar tissue. And this is typical for anteromedial impingement in an athlete. And again, you can see, of course, athletes don't want any downtime. And you can see how you could do this uh, very easily in the office under local. And, um, and literally, right afterwards, the patient can walk out. And of course, there's no sutures, so the risk of infection and so forth is all lowered. And the recover ti recovery times, consequently, um, are far faster. You can see, again, the imaging quality here is really terrific. We're able to see every bit as well as if we'd had a larger uh, scope in the operating room. All we're doing is just taking, slowly taking that scar away and covering the anteromedial aspect of the joint. So we've now changed, in fact, to the three millimeter resector or shaver. And you can see how that gets through the scar tissue a little bit quicker. And we're uncovering some damage to the cartilage there. Now, of course, typically, this is where we would expect to see an osteochondral lesion on the medial Taylor dome of the talus. And as we're shaving more and more away of this anteromedial impingement, it's beginning to show more and more that there is some chondral damage here. So again, now we've cleaned up and you can see the medial malleolus is coming into relief now um, over here. And you can see that looks quite normal. Again, all of this gets impinged when the athlete is running and they go into dorsiflexion. The soft tissue becomes impinged. And then over time, it creates an osteophyte. And the great thing about this nano is you can get in and resect not just the soft tissue, but we also have the ability to take away some of that bone with these three millimeter uh, burrs. Um, for the purpose of this demonstration, we're now going to go in and create an osteochondral lesion because this is typically where we'd have it. Um, and again, you, we, what we've done is we've created this small osteochondral lesion. And again, on the medial tailor, uh, dome, and you can see this is relatively small. So this would be, as long as it's less than a centimeter, this is amenable to reparative uh, procedures. We have a whole host of biologics which we know will improve the standard subchondral abrasion or subchondral irritation. Okay, and here we can see that we've just introduced our uh, small diameter tip um, into the defect, and we don't need to hit this with a mallet. We just need to really just apply some gentle pressure and it'll go through the subchondral plate. And we don't want to do too many of these, just one or two is all we want to do. As long as you see the fat globules there, you know you've gone uh, deep enough to provide a subchondral channel for the mesenchymal stem cell migration. We can then add in um, biocartilage to this and 
we mix our biocartilage usually with concentrated bone marrow aspirate. And by doing so, you provide a physiological grout uh, that will also facilitate chondral growth or fiber cartilage growth into this defect. As you can see now, we're just probing the depth of this lesion just to make sure that there's no loose bodies and that the cartilage surrounding here is quite stable and there is a stable rim to this. And this is a very nice short handle probe um, which can do that very effectively for us. Okay, and as you can see now, we're injecting our biocartilage into the lesion. And we only need a very small amount of it in there. And then we're just using a freer elevator uh, to tamp that down into the defect. And then you can see that that defect has virtually disappeared. And we know that by adding a biologic, we increase the chondrogenic potential of the, uh, of the graft.